good morning, prison. I'm terrified. This is fucking horrible. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I really regret asking people to do this and acting really cool about it. So I thought, it's just a talk. It's not just a talk. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> um, but, uh, today, I've decided to call. I'm going to. Oh, cool. The text is nice and big. Good work. You can see my notes. Um, everyone always says, you know, there's no I in team. But that's a fucking big one in risk. Oh man, so overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me every time at every event. I try everything. I've watched talks and everything. It's so fucking wild being here right now. Um, so yeah, I called my talk, there's an iron risk, because if you want to make something happen, ultimately it comes down to you and you alone. Um, so I think I can just go. So, um, <clears throat> should I pose? Um, just need a little bit of room for my water. Oh, God, I'm nervous. This is horrible. Um, so as far back as I can remember, um, I've only ever wanted to for one thing. Uh, I remember this guy doing a talk and I was like, man, he's a pro. He's fucking so nervous, you've got to slow down. But as far as I, back as I can remember, I've only wanted for one thing, and that's to live a remarkable life. Um, from a really young age, I've always felt like, um, fuck. <laughs> I've always felt, I, I've known that I'm the master of my dreams, and that I'm not the clothes on my back, the watch on my wrist, or the car that I drive. I'm in fact um, kicking my water over. Um, I'm in fact dedicating my life to be the bond between friends. I am, um, please and thank you. No, I'm fine. Fuck, fuck. I'm helping hand for a stranger. I'm Neil Armstrong's bravery. I'm Joe Carter's determination. And I'm Daniel Lieberskin's amazing mind. Uh, I'm a human being, and I'm, a journey, I'm on a journey of greatness. And I recognise that every second of every minute of every day, uh, my opportunity to do something great is coming to an end, and I could die at any moment. So I'm really grateful to be alive. Um, I'm grateful for my upbringing. I'm grateful for my friends. And I'm most certainly grateful to live in the awesome city of Brisbane, because Australia is an amazing city, amazing country, should I say. And most of all, I'm grateful to be here right now. Um, my name's Matthew Hayes. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> my name's Matthew Haynes, and I'm thrilled to share this occasion with each and every one of you. In one way or another, I wouldn't be here without you. So I thought it was really important that I show my appreciation. Thank you um, for letting me share this opportunity with you guys. Um, yeah, and I just want to thank... Uh, Creative Mornings, and especially just into Conza, wherever you've scattered off to be and over, get over this crazy feeling like you're just taking a lot of drugs. Um, but um, uh, it's an amazing gift, and it's a selfless, selfless gift, which uh, just since it's brought to Brisbane, and I'm really excited for the next few people who get to come up on stage and have their mind blown, like mine's being blown right now. Um, and a massive um, round of support for all the sponsors, so please give it up for JC. Big shout to Paul um, and, and welcome for some of our shared sponsors. So that's my marker, dude, so I don't like take up. Oh, oh, oh. Thanks, buddy. Oh, it's not my first radio, even though it looks like it. Um, I'm actually terrified, and I put that in there because I, I knew I would be. Because at 33 years of age, I'm not even halfway through my life, let alone my career. And yet, I've been asked to get up on stage and speak to you guys about risks, uh, uh, share my journey with you, and get up on stage and talk to you guys about my insights with regards to the topic of risk. So what the fuck do I know about risk? I know that risk is a mental adversary. I know that risk never quits. I know that risk never sleeps, and the only way you can overcome it is with persistence, per preparation, determination, and the courage to be selfless. Um, as a young boy, I imagined being great. Um, <clears throat> before life happened, all I ever dreamed about was being as great as Jumping Joe Carter, who I'll introduce to you in a second. Um, Joe Carter, in 1993, uh, hit a home run to, uh, in Game 6 of the World Series. 
down by two runs, hit a home run to win the World Series for the Toronto Blue Jays. And I thought to myself, if that's the bar, that's what I want to be. And um, I would call that a life-changing moment for me. But a lot of other people would call that the greatest game of baseball that ever lived. He's had his moments too. It wasn't always great times. Fucking pow! <laughs> Better in slow motion. You know what's in slow motion? <laughs> Shit sails out of the park. And that's what I want it to be. That's the benchmark. There's nothing, there's nothing less than that for me. See ya. <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> and this is why they call him Jumping Joe Carter. Because this man. Right now he's thinking, fuck, that might go out. <laughs> oh fuck, it's going. <laughs> oh no, it's gone. <laughs> I've just changed the world. <laughs> so yeah. Um, with idols like Joe Carter on our telly, being inspired by greatness, for me anyways, it was just a daily ritual. Uh, it was as normal as hating vegetables, or mum hiding them under the mash. Uh, it was as normal as playing Lego. It was as normal as being scared of the dark or even fighting with your siblings. So, um, before life happened, most of us dreamt of being incredible. But, somewhere along the line, life did happen. And a lot of us failed to become the person that we once dreamt of becoming. Um, clearly, I'm not Joe Carter, and Matt Haynes will never win the World Series. So, what happened? Life happened. We've uh, we've become cluttered, our lives have been cut, become cluttered with uh, complication and compromise. And we've all managed to settle something that's sandwiched between uh, what we want, what our friends and family want from us, and what we think is relatively achievable. Which is, it's hard, it's hard work, I guess. We've, we've forgotten to believe in ourselves, and we've forgotten to, to love ourselves. And we've inadvertently given up our reason for being. And I mean, like, a reason to be Joe Carter. We've lowered our expectations uh, according to the people around us. And uh, we've compounded this error by giving up on our biggest and brightest dreams. So while uh, we all hit rock bottom here for a minute, I just want you to cast your mind back to uh, what you wanted to be and what you wanted to achieve in your lifetime. Because I know that while you've got blood coursing through your veins, your dream is somewhere deep in your soul and all it wants is a little bit of love and attention and you can fucking do it. Um, yeah, a bit of love and commitment. Yeah, commitment's a big one. You've got to be committed. Because, uh, so I agreed to do this talk because I'm passionate about dreams. Um, it's my hope that I can inspire everybody in here to re-engage with their best self the way that my friends and family have engage, uh, encourage me to engage with my best self because I'm not fucking perfect, trust me. Um, yeah, my mentors and my friends like Sonia in the back there, uh, Grace over here, Paul, all these guys all encourage me to do, uh, Dahlia all encourage me to do amazing things and I just want to say thanks to you guys because without you it doesn't happen. You. you guys are there. So, I guess my first point of today's talk is all you need some friends, and a little bit of love.
It is! Case in point. You guys know it? You gonna sing it? Bunch of pussies. But yeah, so a couple of weeks ago I received a link in Skype from my best mate, this person right here, Grace Stewart. And, um, fuck! Upon clicking the link, I learnt about the Japanese concept. I think it's called Ikiga. I can't read, I'm very dyslexic. Anyways, and if you got it, and I'm just going to call it your reason for being from here on out, because I might have said it completely fucking wrong. So, um, but it's where your passion, mission, profession, and vocation overlap. It's the ultimate combination of what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and most importantly, what the world needs. Oops. <laughs> That's meant to have a diagram on it, never mind. <laughs> so it goes without saying, and this is where, this is where we, we've hit rock bottom and now we're going up, so it's all good. Because it goes without saying that finding your reason for being will become the biggest risk you ever take. <laughs> Me too. Um, and it's fair to say that you'll have no one to guide you except your head and your heart who are going to team up to help show you the way forward to help you learn the difference between wants and needs, fast and slow, right and wrong, and yes and no. You'll, uh, you'll have to enter this journey knowing that every part of your being will be tested and every one of your weaknesses will be found. Every single one of them. It's here where we'll fall and stumble. It's here where honest efforts will be all we have to pull us onwards and upwards. It's here where our sense of self will be our true north. And it's here where the seesaw of life can easily be mistaken by something far more complicated like a Rubik's Cube. And some of you guys out there could probably do them, but I can't. So if you can do the Rubik's Cube, think about something you can't do. And that's what life can seem like. <laughs> when really, it's just a seesaw. It's a bit of give and take. That's all it is. The risks associated with your dreams are going to come in vast and varied formats. Some will be very easy and you'll be able to navigate them because they're natural. Others are going to be far more complex and comprehensive and they're going to make the path forward seem much more ambiguous, much more difficult to navigate. Um, did I say everything? Yeah, look at that, I nailed it. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 so, yeah, sweet. So, <laughs> on a personal level, you're going to have to become, um, become comfortable with a decision to want more for yourself. Because if you've picked something, it's going to impact a lot of people and it's going to be something huge. And you need to be okay that that's okay and have more for yourself. But most importantly, the people around you. Just like JC, she's done this for you guys. So yeah, again, give her a round, dude. This is such. Um, you're gonna have to back yourself. You're gonna have to believe in your cause because it's gonna have to be something big and something that's very important to you. And the people you love, of course. This is a really great one. You, you'll become a silent achiever. And 99 times out of 100, you're going to make a massive impact in all the people around you's lives before you see an impact in your own. And it's at that stage you've got to remember that you're doing it for the right causes because what goes around absolutely comes around. And if you can imagine you impacted a million people's lives, imagine a million people doing a little thing for you, all coming back to you, and then taking all that love and then shooting it back out again. It's amazing. Wow. That was really <laughs> sexual. Um, <laughs> But it's just a big cycle of life, it's awesome. Oh, wow. I, well, I'm trying to be serious. Um, you're going to have to lead with your actions. Because not only will you inspire others, but you'll earn the right to have a mentor. And be a mentor. And possibly one day lead your tribe. And, um, and it's your selflessness that will become a catalyst for the respect other people bestow on you. Which is an amazing feeling. You're going to have to learn to dance like nobody's watching. Everyone says this, but you're going to have to do it. Like, how good is it when you just fucking cut loose? It just feels amazing. Uh, I can't dance, but I've done it once. It was awesome. But you're going to have to pursue... Is there some shit in my hair? Or am I just tripping? You're going to have to pursue your journey of greatness in your own fashion. 
It's your journey, and you're in charge, which is so important. Uh, one thing that I took away from last year's event, there's definitely something crawling on my head. <laughs> one, one thing that I learned from last year's event is that there's no, our, our event in Brisbane, that there's no event, uh, there is no handbook for what we're doing. There's only intuition. That's all you've got. We're all born with it, and we all need to use it. So you're going to rely on this heavily in order to take your way forward. So if you're at all scared about the decisions or the path you need to, to, to pursue, start today and start thinking about little decisions that you can mould that intuition and bend it and forge it into something that you can just rely on. And you know immediately whether it's a good answer or a wrong answer or something you want to pursue, someone you want to help. Because you can't help everyone, so picking the right people to help is fundamental. I've, I've tried to help people and I failed. And I've tried to help people, and it's been awesome. And you learn your lessons. So keep honing that intuition. Start today. Um, you're going to have to accept that failure is an important way for life to teach you a lesson. Like failure, everything is negative. Failure is just another word for learning. We all made mistakes, but then you let your emotions get involved, and all of a sudden you think you can't do things. That's fucking bullshit. You can do anything. And if you make a mistake, you just have to go the other way. When you hit that fork next time, you'll be right as rain. But the next fork's going to be more difficult to overcome. But what's crazy about failure or accepting failure is for the first time in your life, you're going to fall flat on your face. And everyone's going to be watching you. You need to accept that. It's going to happen. Um, this will be your first test of, of true self. And it's at this point in your amazing journey that you're just going to fucking let go and become who you are born to be, or you're going to retreat back to complication and compromise. Good? That's a good one. You're going to earn respect in your journey, and in doing so, you're going to give an honest effort. Most of you who pursue your dream beyond the point of letting go are going to storm so far ahead of everybody you know that you're going to have to start competing against yourself and yourself alone. Don't compare yourself to other people. Pick your personal best and go, that's the measure of me. How can I better myself? And if you continue to do that, you'll reach your moment or your point of your reason for being at a, a stage in your life. You'll probably be old and old, but you'll be able to really enjoy it and see the impact of what you've done before, the, before you die, which is super important, I think. Um, your reason for being is all about you. And it's all about your beliefs, not anyone else's. Be influenced, but make up your own mind. You're going to have to use your failure as motivation. Every, every failure makes you smarter, more insightful, more intuitive, of course. And I think these are the three most important pillars of becoming your own person and finding your reason for being. On an emotional level, you'll have to be open for new experiences, new outcomes, new friends. It's very likely that the yin to your yang is sitting in this room or standing right here, right now. It's even more likely that the person sitting right beside you is your next mentor, your future lover. Who knows? Have a look, see if they're all right. Um, your challenge is going to be to navigate the doubt that people cast upon you. And your challenge will also be to find a calling that's more important to you that the criticisms people throw at you because the world's full of haters. Visualize your success. Dream about reaching your goal and imagine it every day when you get up. If it comes down to it, write what you want to do and what you want to be, put it on a bit of paper and blue tack it to the roof of your bedroom. And every morning when you wake up, that's a nice little reminder that you did that and you're going there and that's what you're about. If you can dream it, you can do it. I firmly believe it. Uh, believing in yourself is the most powerful thing you can do. You're number one. You're in charge. You're, the cock you're in the cockpit. That's another amazing word. <laughs> cockpit. <laughs> Hashtag for the day. <laughs> um, now, in my experiences, this is the thing that, I don't know, it's just my own personal phenomena. But I believe that when you dedicate yourself to your craft, you make yourself magnetic. And all of a sudden, you find more yings to your yang, yins to your yang, than you ever thought possible. And then you're going to be on a trajectory that when you keep 
going so hard, you end up getting out of the noise. And it's easy to find the other people on the same trajectory because you can just see them and you can share your goal. Like Lisa, she tried to do creative mornings and so did JC, but instead of going, oh well, JC was awarded the whatever, they've teamed up and now Lisa's smashing it with JC, so well done. Hon. Because if you guys didn't do it, you wouldn't know each other. And two minds are better than one, most times. You're gonna have to be, did I just miss a bunch? No? You're gonna have, wow, I'm shooting all over the place. You have to, wow. <laughs> Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> On a financial level, you're going to need to be, become okay with debt and learn the difference between good and bad debt. Someday, your reason for being will require you to make a financial risk, or could require you to make a financial risk. And it's my own personal belief that if you feel that your reason for being deserves, gives you the right to ask someone for one dollar or a million dollars, either way, I believe you need to save your own one dollar or one million dollars to prove to yourself that you can ask someone for someone else's money. And ask your friends and family first. <laughs> you know, you never let them down, right? Um, it's important that you prove to yourself that you're worthy. Sometimes a bit of self-belief is all you need. And um, I'll get to that in a second. You're gonna have to be okay with profit and learn how to invest it wisely. Think like a billionaire, but spend like you're on minimum wage. Like, they help your strategy grow on a level that helps you dream on a level that you never dreamt before. Because you're like, oh, I've got $1,000. What can I do with that that I couldn't do with $0? And now I've got $10,000. What could I do with that when I only had 1000 Now I've got a million dollars. What am I going to do with that? Look how, look how big the responsibility becomes. And that's why honing your intuition from day one is a very important skill. Because investing that million dollars, one wrong decision, gone. One right decision, five million dollars. So it's super important. And you can't be scared to make those decisions because you will eventually fall and fail. But yeah, if you do well, big sums of money could come your way. So don't be scared of money, it's just money. And while we're speaking about it, it's not the key to happiness. Your dreams are the key to happiness. Being your own person is the key to happiness. And if you pursue your dreams rel relentlessly, the money will just follow. Profit should have no real bearing on your dream. Uh, other than it's a means to an end. It helps you pay your bills, it helps you take care of your friends and family and the people that supported you when you had nothing. Um, I firmly believe that people buy authenticity. Being authentic with your actions and righting your wrongs is one of the most important things you can do. I once had someone tell me, don't ever apologise for everything. I told that guy to get fucked and I quit that job. I didn't want to work with people like that. I think you should always apologise for your mistakes, no matter how big they are. And if you fucked up, you should write that wrong two times. Or at least 1.2 times. <laughs> so, a little bit of interest. It shows that you mean it. Because at the end of the day, your word is all you have. Damn it. Um, so, the baseline goal. If you want to start taking risks today, fucking high five. On you. But start off with maybe saving. And if you've saved $1,000, save $10,000. If you saved $100, try and save $1,000. If you uh, have lost five kilos and you want to lose weight, lose 10 kilos. If you've set a regime for a month and then you lost it, do it for two months. Just beat your personal best. And it's using, is it the next slide or this slide? Yeah, so you use that, that skill and that, that positivity to leverage that onto bigger and better things. And before you know it, the earlier you start, before you know it, you're changing the world, or at least your community, which is, I think, is a just, if you can get to changing your community, you're an amazing person. And I say that because I've got a story coming up. <laughs> so it's my, yeah, it's my hope that you leverage so much, so sex, uh, so much success that you'll reach a reason for being while you're old enough to appreciate it. Can you imagine that if you did something so awesome that you got to actually stand on your pedestal before you were like so fucking old, and then you could actually say something that was really important to you that even more people would listen. Like, crowds of people would listen. Something like Bernie Sanders. Like, I don't know, I don't know into politics or whatnot, but that guy says a lot of shit that makes my heart get warm. And I stole that call from Emily, because she's the best. <laughs> um, but yeah, that Bernie Sanders just blows my mind and I cannot fucking figure out for the life of me why people are interested in that other fuckwit who I'm not even going to say his name, because he doesn't <laughs> even deserve to be spoken in Australia. 
it'd be awesome to have a million people listen to you if your heart's in the right place and do something awesome with it. My first, I believe my first mentor, my grandfather, Bert Haynes, reached his reason for being. And I, I believe this because the weather never had any bearing on how he was. Oh, look, it's raining. Vegemite toast, smash it together, bite the ears off, put it down, sip a cup of tea, how you going? Have you read the possum pages? Read me a joke. I'd laugh, even though it's horrible. I'd laugh because the way he told it was so much better. <laughs> better. He, he, they should have employed him to read the possum pages on Saturday morning, like that little dude in the corner of the screen, and you could just like tune into him. But, <laughs> cracker, Bert, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> he, he would say to me, um, he would say, hey, cock. Uh, do you know the difference between a elephant and a post box? And I'd say, nah. He goes, well, you're not posting mail today, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, and I know he reached his. I, I know he reached his reason for being because. Morning. There's a microphone down there. It's going to be really loud. People be listening on the, on the internet. Oh Jesus. Um, but I know he reached his reason for being because. Even when he retired, when I actually got to know my grandfather as a teenager and as a, as a young adult, he, um, he served the community with a smile. Nothing was too big. Every, he impacted so many people's lives. But unfortunately, oh, that's backwards. Don't switch hands. You've got to go the other way with your thumb if you switch hands. <laughs> but at 82, unfortunately, he passed away. And it wasn't until his funeral that I realised the extent of his contribution. Because, like all amazing people, he was a silent achiever. He never told me how good he was. He never told me what he'd been up to. All he cared about was what I was interested in and how he could help me. As a young person, because you're greedy little fuckers. <laughs> um, but outside of his funeral, it was a packed house. And I'm talking like, this isn't a packed house compared to his funeral, and this is pretty rocking. And, People stood outside in the burning rain, uh, in burning rain, <laughs> in the burning sun for like three hours while the family said, gave their respects just to say he, they were there. So they got three seconds while he was put into the, the, his last ride, I guess you'd call it, um, just so they could pay their respects. And I thought to myself, now that is a reason for being. And it was at that point that I realised we weren't even saying goodbye. We were celebrating a life well lived. So that's the measure. That's the measure for me. To live it to the max. Not money. Not my clothes. Not my ride. Maybe where I live, because I'm pretty proud of Queensland and South East Queensland. But um, yeah, to, to die with a smile on my face. I think that's the go. And just be ready to die. It's like, fuck, I'm so tired from having an awesome time. <laughs> I'm ready to check the fuck out. <laughs> So, um, since following in his footsteps, I've never wanted for anything. I've developed a relentless pursuit for the success by con conquering my own personal best efforts. Albeit at work, in my personal life, in my hobbies or in my side projects. All four things that I think are really important. And for whatever reason, I've sought out inspiration, not in books, well, I'm fucking killing it on time, by the way. I've not sought inspiration through books, but by being in real life, like, I'm fucking terrified up here. I don't know if I want to cry. I don't know if I want to just melt over or run home. But it's awesome. And being up here, I'm so glad I did it. It's terrifying. You have to believe me. But I did it. I'll get there in a second. That's my next point. But nothing is more important to me than just... Uh, hold on, did I say that point yet? No, good, good, good. Um... I'm just going to start this one again. For whatever reason, I've sought out inspiration, not in books, but by living life, experiencing life. And, uh, and through doing this, I've become passionate about design, solving problems, and, uh, and being passionate about impact and good uh, uh, the impact that good design can make on the world. Um, understanding the power of design, philosophy, and psychology have become more important to me than money, social status, or material items. I'll give it all away right now. As long as I've got a pair of comfy pants and a t-shirt and my mates will I don't need anything. But somehow I've got everything. I've got everything I could ever want. Some things are bad, some things are good, but everything I have amazing girlfriend, I have amazing family. My parents split up but me and mum rocking best mate, she's my best mate. If I was wearing a thing it would say mum. But if grandpa was alive it'd say pa. Um, 
<laughs> so as I, as I alluded to earlier, I once dreamed of being Joe Carter, a Hall of Fame baseball player. <clears throat> um, from the age 12 through to 24, I spent every waking moment preparing myself for the day I would forge my name in history through my own baseball heroics. Like, I always imagined that some reason it would be me and the LA Dodgers. I'd be on the hill, it'd be the ninth inning, I'd be pitching for the game, it'd be loaded bases, oh, and they'd call me in. It's like, you're on fucking hands, get in there, you bastard. <laughs> and I'd come out and just smash it and win, and everyone had hoisted me up, and I was ready for it, but it didn't happen. Something else will happen, but that didn't happen. But I, I've been, I prepared myself to have that, just like Joe Carter. Truth is, during my 12 year career, I was physically and mentally tested every day. And I admit I almost quit on three separate occasions. And this is before anything had ever happened. This is where the politics of the game were getting in my face, where my arm was sore, where my body was sore, where, where just training was too much and I was missing my friends and I was missing, I missed, I missed my childhood. I gave up my childhood to pursue my passion. And in my darkest hour, the deepest troughs of my career, I could barely hear my own personal voice saying, you can do it. And I think that's the one thing that I was born with, or I found earlier than a lot of people, is a voice in that says, you can fucking do it. If you can do it, do it. Because I'm not fucking hugely smart. I guess I'm just brave. But, um, and my internal voice, or oh, my, um, my, my, my ability to pick myself up off the ground and just persevere. Because we were all persevering. And just to focus on the prize and go, everyone's doing it tough. But if everyone quits, some other bastard's going to get my job. So I'm going to be the last man standing. And when they come for the best Aussie, it'll be me. But yeah, I almost quit. Almost. I stopped believing in myself. I stopped dreaming. Most of all, I stopped believing. Oh, I said that first. I stopped encouraging myself. And in the end, my success became the derivative of my ability to persevere. And this is what I've come to share with you today. Uh, after countless tests and opportunities to quit in December 2001, I got my pro contract. And I moved to America. And uh, I played with the Cleveland Indians. It was awesome. It was nothing like this. <laughs> This is what my dream became. I threw some fucking wild pictures in my time. It's awesome when you're the guy. So uh, it was in my 12 year dream that I made a reality when I was uh, as an 18 year old lad from the Sunshine Coast. So if I can do that as 18, at 18, if I could do that, imagine what you can do from this amazing city in this information age in Brisbane with all the talent and wealth and knowledge that you've got, right? So anything is possible. Well, before I close, oh, I just wanted to take a moment to understand how blessed we are and how blessed we are to be here right now. I think this is the greatest country in the world just because I feel safe at night. No one bugs me. It's just an awesome place to be. And I think this is the best generation to be alive. And anything is possible. So um, this is your time, guys. I love you guys. <laughs>